Hey, we're going to look at integration using U substitution. So before we get to the U substitution, let's remind ourselves that we start off learning how to integrate um, basically from taking antiderivatives or reversing our derivative rules. And in that case, we're very limited. So when we talk about uh, the power rule, remember the power rule, you bring the power out front and reduce it by one when you take the derivative. So you do the opposite of that when you integrate. Integration of x to the n, you increase that exponent to n plus one and then you divide by the n plus one. And of course we always talked about adding on the c at the end for an indefinite integral. Um, so all of our rules for integration were sp function specific. We haven't seen at this point anything that integrates a product rule, a uh, quotient rule, or a um, chain rule. But what we're going to do here, use substitution, kind of backtracks a um, chain rule. So how do we do use substitution? Um, so it's a reversal of the chain rule derivative, um, but it's more of a process than anything else. So there's no clear rule by itself. So even with the chain rule, we could write down the generic composite form. Um, so we just have a list of steps here that could vary from time to time, but this is a generic step. So um, in the examples we'll do, we'll pick a u, we'll make a du, we'll replace all the x's with u's, we'll finally be able to do the integration that we're hoping for. Hopefully it'll fit some of the specific rules that we have. And then we'll go back to, um, to X's. Okay. And I've got that lined up on all the examples I'm going to do. So we'll see it. All right. Some things to keep in mind. Um, when we decide to pick a U, we're going to look for something that when we pick the U, we see the derivative also in there. Um, our, Derivatives, um, when we do the substitution, may not kind of match up perfectly. Usually there'll be some coefficients that have to be adjusted. Um, we need this thing completely in U when we do the integration. So we can't have U's and X's still in there. Okay. So let's finally get to our first example here. Okay. So we've got the integration of 3 times 4X plus 5, all that to the 7th, DX. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is pick a U. So we're trying to reverse a um, chain rule. So we're looking for something that may have been the inside part of a chain rule possibly. And in this case, 4X plus 5. So I'm going to come off to this. Well, I'll just do it down here. Pick U. My U is going to be 4X plus 5. And if that's the case, step two, I'm going to make du. So I'm going to take the derivative of both sides. So instead of calling this thing u prime, I'll call it du. So du equals 4 dx. Derivative of 4x is just 4. Derivative of 5 is 0. So du equals um, 4 dx. Let me clean that up a little bit. Now when we come up here to make our substitution, we can call this 4x plus 5 u and then we have this dx out here that we want to work with. Well, let's adjust this just a little bit. We're going to say that we get the dx by itself, which would be dividing both sides by 4. So dx would be 1 fourth du. So we're going to call the 4x plus 5 u, and in this case, the dx 1 fourth du. So we're going to rewrite this thing as 3 times one fourth from the dx part times u to the seventh du. So the three is still there from the coefficient. We didn't do anything to replace it. We replace the four x plus five with u and we're going to replace the dx with one fourth du. I just rearranged it a little bit. So we don't have to rewrite this bef again before we integrate, but we have replaced everything else all in terms of u. So let's see here. I'll just clean it up a little bit. 3 fourths u to the 7th du. So we took it and wrote it as a general power rule. So we're going to integrate this. It will go u to the 8th. Um, the 3 fourths will be there. We'll divide by 1 8, the new 
um, exponent. And then on the end, we'll have plus c. So if we clean that up a little bit, it'll look like um, 3 over 32 uh, u to the 8 plus c. So what did I do? I picked the u being 4x plus 5. I got a du, and I had to make a few adjustments to, to change it, but I replaced all the x terms the 4x plus 5 and the dx with u terms and then I integrated which is what I've done here um, but we want to take this back to x the way it was so we're going to replace our u with 4x plus 5 so our final answer will be 3 over 32 and then it will be 4x plus 5 to the 8th plus c since we don't have any way of finding the c or there's no numbers to plug in. Okay, so that's our first example. All right, let's go to another example. All right, our next example here is the integration of x squared times e to the x cubed dx. So again, thinking about chain rules, look for something that is inputted to a normal place. Uh, we're okay with e to the x, but e to the x cubed would need a chain rule if you were taking a derivative. So hopefully if we let that be our u, u equals x cubed, maybe we can find um, that the other x's in here will disappear. Because remember, we can't just get rid of part of them. So if u is x uh, cubed, then du is 3x squared dx. And here's an interesting little thing. We can replace the x squared dx um, but we do have to do something with that 3 so we don't have to divide by the 3 and the x squared we can do it various ways but we'll rewrite this the du equals 3x squared dx we'll divide both sides by 3 and that will be 1 third du equals x squared dx so we're going to replace that with 1 third du. So in rewriting that we will have, let's see here, 1 third e to the u du. So we replaced x cubed with u and we replaced x squared dx with 1 third du. And that's easy to integrate because the antiderivative of e to the u is just e to the u. So the one-third coefficient stays, one-third e to the u plus c. But we've got to go back to um, x. So in the end, we'll replace u with x cubed. So we'll have one-third e to the x cubed plus c. And that will be our integration. Um, anytime you want to check an integration, you can just take the derivative of it and see if it works. Okay, next example. Integration of the square of the natural log of x, and then that's all over x. Okay, so some scary stuff here, but I do see some parentheses, which kind of infers it was a chain rule. So inside the parentheses is natural log of x, and it's not easy to always pick your um, u's. Sometimes you make a mess of it, but it comes better with experience. But I'm going to let my u be the natural log of x. Okay. And if that's the case, my du is 1 over x dx. So I see a good correlation there. There's x on the bottom, dx. That's going to make a good du. So I've got everything I need. Let's see how clean it looks when I move it over. So I'm replacing natural log of x with u. So I'm going to have u squared. The x on the bottom and the dx are replaced with du. Okay. So see how that lines up. This is a very simple power rule integration. So u to u squared becomes u cubed, but we'll divide by the new exponent of 3. So I've got 1 third u cubed plus c. 
And now I need to go back to whatever U was. Okay, so I'm going to have one third um, natural log of X quantity cubed plus C. Okay, so just kind of keeping in mind where things came from and where they went. Okay, so I picked a U to be natural log of X. I made a DU by taking a derivative. I switched out all the U X's with U's. I integrated. And then lastly, I went back to X. Okay, let's see here. We've got <coughs> the integration of 8X times the square root of 4X squared minus 7 DX. Well, I don't really care to rewrite this thing to start with, but I will. It'll be 8X, I'm going to use exponents, 4X squared minus 7 to the one half dx. It doesn't really help with the u substitution, but it does make life a little bit easier. But now that you see the parentheses, hopefully that helps you identify u. So we're gonna let our u be 4x squared minus seven. So if that's the case, u equals 4x squared minus seven. Take the derivative of both sides, we'll have du equals 8x dx. So now I'm gonna make some replacements. Um, because I see this 8x dx right there. So let's see. We're going to bring this over. The 8x dx just becomes du. And the 4x squared minus 7 is u. So I have u to the 1 half du. Let me fix my little integration symbol there. I don't know if I'll make it look any better or not. It can make it look really good if you take your time. So coordinating everything, u, and du. So another just simple power rule integration. So this becomes uh, u to the 3 halves. We'll divide by 3 halves, which will become 2 thirds, and then plus c. So still in terms of u, it's 2 thirds u to the 3 halves plus c. And we're going to take that u and go back to x. So we will finally get 2 thirds 4x squared minus 7 to the 3 halves plus c. Okay, just making sure you feel good about all the parts. It's a lot harder when you have to pick the u yourself and do it yourself, so just be careful. Okay, we'll stop there and do some more in another video.